and welcome to Dawn News English with 20 Minutes. I'm Nadia Naki with you. Today we thought we've discussed a lot of politics, but what is actually keeping Pakistan or the Pakistani nation intact is one sport and that is cricket. We talk about PSL, it's the eighth edition and uh, the matches are on, the crowd is roaring and Lahore Kalandar has always been in spot. In, in the initial, I'd say, uh, PSL editions, Lahore Kalandar was uh, looked upon at the, uh, as a team that was, you know, everybody wanted it to win, but for some reason it just wouldn't win and everybody was thinking, why does it happen? Then uh, we saw that Lahore Kalandas really expanded, they developed a players development program, they are the talk of the town and in this PSL 8th edition you see them uh, at the top of the table, they are the defending champions, so far so good. We have the chief operating officer, Samin uh, Rana with us. Thank you so much for joining us, Samin. First of all, how is it going, the PSL 8 edition? With your team. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, thanks for inviting me. I think it's going Alhamdulillah uh, going good so far. Uh, we still have uh, you know crucial games coming up, but uh, initially the team has really performed well, and uh, we are at the top of the table, so can't ask for more. Mm. Why do you think Lahore Kalandar has always been in this uh, you know the, the center of focus right from PSL edition one? There's something special I about it. I, I guess uh, there are a couple of reasons for that to start up with it's Lahore, Lahore, Lahore. Um, and the second thing is the, the kind of a work which Lahore Kalandar has done, which is very unprecedented and uh, not only in Pakistan but across the world if you see nobody has ever done such kind of a work under the franchise. So I think that's probably the one reason if I can think of. It has provided uh, Lahore Kalandar the connectivity to the uh, to the civil society and the community so be it a player development program be it a covid uh, you know be it a society contribution whether it's uh, uh, we are everywhere so we work 365 days uh, a year and we are not a team who just uh, woke up for the psl and then sleep again so this is probably the reason we have so many fans and I'm, I'm so thankful to each one of them because it shows in the number of people when they showed up in the ground. You see four games Lahore have in, in Lahore and they all were sold out. Even the Karachi game we had sold out. So that shows you the, uh, the popularity of the brand and I think the reason behind this popularity is the work which Lahore Kalandar is doing for the society. Mm, definitely. So, what are you? Uh, what are your expectations of this season? Obviously, we wanted to win the tournament, and we become, wanted to become the first team to defend its title. But we also know that it's not going to be easy. Uh, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. So, we are very grounded at the moment. Uh, we are not getting carried away by the initial successes, and we keep looking into our processes, keep looking into our mistakes, and continuously trying to improve. But in cricket, uh, you can do all the things, but still there is something called a luck factor. And we are hoping that the luck will be favoring us primarily. Uh, we are confident because it's going to happen in our hometown, Lahore. And Lahoris are so passionate and they don't want to see any other team winning. No doubt about that, Lahori is a very fun-loving, they enjoy the match and it's always been a crowd full when we see Lahore Kalandar is playing. So what exactly, Samin, went into this, uh, what, what thought went into the players' development program? How did it all initiate and what made you, um, you know, uh, expand so much and because uh, your players' development program has provided one of the best players to the Pakistani team? So there were two reasons uh, to start up with. Uh, first of all, uh, there was a business season, which was a calendar when we came into this business. Uh, we were probably the only franchise which took cricket as a business. We did not use this franchise as a leveraging tool to promote our other businesses. Uh, we could have done that. We have the cricket business, Arthur was uh, owning that business, so he would have done that. But then we thought that if a business cannot stand on its own, then there is no point of doing it. So we purposely decided to have cricket as our business. So the, for this business, we needed a raw material, which is players. And for those players, when we bought the team, we were told that there is no talent left in Pakistan and the funnel is empty. And uh, the first season, if you look into our uh, emerging category, we got two players. One was 31 year old and one was 29 year old. And those were labeled as the emerging by the Pakistan cricket board. 
So after the uh, debacle of the first season, uh, we had uh, we, we didn't have to be honest uh, an opportunity because we we could have waited for other teams to let their players go and then we will pick it or we take a difficult path which is a longer path to okay. develop our own player. So we took that path and initially I know a lot of people made a lot of fun of uh, our this program. Uh, they used to call us uh, Ishtiari, superstar, um, meaning they are not superstar and we are trying to promote them as a superstar. Uh, we did a talent and program and then people labeled it as a gimmick to make money. No, there was no money we were making, we were actually spending money. So I think hats off to Akim Javed, Atif Prana for uh, you know, uh, consistently believing in this process, consistently working hard. When we become the first franchise to have a collaboration with Cricket Australia, we send our players over there. So whole thing was happening for number one, love of the game, uh, number two, for the society and the country. Because we believe that Pakistan has a talent. To promote that talent and number three, they're going to serve not only Kalantar but Pakistan as well. For the period, like four or five years, initial time was very difficult but now, Alhamdulillah, everybody is understanding that what we said and what we believe was the right thing. So, so for the viewers, if you would like to tell us a little bit about how does one enroll in this players development program because there's a lot of talent in Pakistan for this sport. Yeah, so we initially we used to do uh, open trials. So we used to go to different locations and we make some announcement in the social media or our partner, TV partner, uh, and we put some holding that come for open. So anybody could have come. Uh, the first three years we did that, and there were like five hundred thousand kids physically trialed in those three years from Kashmir to Leia to Sarkota to Faisalabad to Gilgit Baltistan. You name it. Um, mm. Then obviously it was becoming difficult logistically, COVID came and we were not be able to go to different places uh, and also uh, rather than giving them a 2-3 day opportunity to do the trial, we end up with uh, having our own high performance centre in uh, Lahore. So the idea behind high performance centre was two things, one to provide any kid across Pakistan and even outside Pakistan an opportunity to come and get Trial. And the second thing was to make sure that we have a facility where we can also develop our own there. So, right. to answer your question, anybody can come to our high performance center, to our social media, to any means, email, phone calls, they can come and book their appointment. It's open for all. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there some age category? There is no age category limit. We have at the moment 128 players from aging from 5 years to 40 years. Wow, you've got young kids also. So what about, okay, there's a lot of investment that is done in men's cricket. I mean, across the board, across the world, I see. But women cricket is not so far behind. So are you also investing in that? Uh, definitely, I think the Hot Calendar is probably the first franchise who has done that. So we have done an open trial for the females as well just recently, like six months ago. And we got uh, 50 girls who are participating in High Performance Centre. But for the female or women cricket is that, you know, it needs to be built. The brand needs to be built. Men cricket is very popular in Pakistan. But uh, unfortunately, women cricket is uh, not doesn't get a lot of attraction or a lot of uh, you know eyeballs uh, there are many reasons for that but uh, the ground reality is as such that our women are not unfortunately encouraged so taking the you know the success of player development program we thought that probably through this brand we can promote the women cricket in pakistan and that's where okay. without even having a women cricket team or without even having anything to showcase the women talent we end up having a trial for these women and i was pleasantly surprised to see the number of women showed up they say pakistan i think at times i, I don't remember what time but I think there were like 50 girls playing cricket in Pakistan. But on our trial, there was 1,000 girls showed up for this trial. So that shows that's that's yeah. a huge number. That's a big number. So uh, uh, we were pleasantly surprised. So that shows us that Pakistan also have a lot of talent when it comes to the women cricket. But unfortunately, we don't provide our women equal opportunities, which is very unfortunate. And the Hornbill is fully committed 
to, to, to connect this thing, uh, but we do need platforms. So unfortunately, there is no ESL and there is no team which we can own at the moment. So all I'm doing is that we are reaching out to our partner in Yorkshire and all in Australia and requesting them to train our girls. So we have an MOU signed with Spirit Australia where we can send 16 of our girls. Okay. But I think Pakistan will be going to do more on the as a franchise owner also, uh, where would you like, Samin, uh, do, do, are you happy with the way the PSL has, has been executed um, in all the seasons or would you, um, would you enjoy that more provinces and more cities are participating in? And do you think we still need and we still have to go a long way in terms of developing our stadiums, our pitches in more, in more cities uh, other than Lahore, Karachi and Pindi? I think the most important and the fundamental thing is the making sure that this business model works. Uh, I, I quite often I heard adding teams to it, but the reality is that the existing franchise owner till last year they were all in losses. And as a private owner, obviously everyone wants to make sure that the bottom line is at least break even. Nobody wants to lose money, but hats off to the, those six franchise owners who have you know, uh, without any, 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 any aim, they were continuing to invest in Pakistan for the benefit and for the love of their country. Right. Uh, so, those six teams, first of all, we need to, there are some fundamental issues in the existing financial model, which need to be corrected. Uh, those those corrections need to be done sooner than later. It's been seven years that uh, we've been talking to Pakistan Cricket Board. There are some improvements done, but there are still some very, very basic fundamental challenges which need to be addressed before even we think about expanding this. Because the last thing we should do is to uh, get carried away by the name and the success and without realizing that uh, we need to keep an eye on the sustainability of this product. Because it will be very unfortunate if we end up, you know, not being able to survive the economic conditions. Uh, if we don't correct the thing, if we don't take steps now. So, in my mind, it is absolutely necessary for Pakistan Cricket Board to, to address those challenges before we do anything else. What exactly are those challenges that you would want to that? To give, you, yeah. to give you an example, that if there are contractual uh, you know, anomalies, for example, I would call it anomalies, but at that time when we signed up the contracts, not to be very honest, it was more of a love of the game and love of Pakistan that we all came and invested. I'm giving you an example that like six years, there are millions of dollars of losses which each team is carrying. So we need to come up with a solution where, where we need to share the burden. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, when, when this become a product, now everybody wants to get benefit out of it, but nobody is worried about, uh, you know, or, or looking at the, 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 the expense of it. So, to, to give you a recent example, the security issue, where yeah. uh, the, you heard that the games are moving to Karachi, which is going to be a disaster for the game. But this was all about money. And at the end, the only one thing the Pakistan Cricket Board used to provide, now franchises are taking the 50%, which we did not agree yet, but still that is the proposal, that the 50% cost should come to franchises, which is, which is not fair. because. Franchises pays you fee, franchise pays you players costs, they pay you hotel, they pay you ticket, they pay everything. And then on top of it, then if you are wanting to provide a presidential security because of your country circumstances, we should not be burdened with that. And we have unfortunately people who even don't understand the finances and they come up in the media and give ridiculous statement of 70 crore profit or 80 crore profit, which is hurting the brand. They're so far away from the reality. But mm. unfortunately, this, this is the world you have to live in. That's quite a challenge. So, yeah. That, those, franchise, yeah. So, so Samin, one, one more thing. Do you think, uh, you know, yes, we have Lahore Kalandas, we have Karachi Kings, Islamabad United, Multan Sultan, and we need and Quetta Gladiators. Do you think there is more space for more teams and that will make PSL more challenging also? I think, uh, again, I would say there is one, uh, one is the financial element we need to talk about. The second element is the quality of the player. So, right. let's talk about in reality. We think about adding this emotionally, for sure. I want Seattle to be a team because I'm from Seattle. Mm -hmm. I want uh, you know Kashmir to be a team because I'm from Kashmir. 
But the fact of the matter is that in your platinum category, in, if you look into the recent draft, the platinum is the top category. In the top category, how many Pakistani players you have? Only one. And you know who was that guy? Fakhar Zaman. He was there because I draw, I left him there for a planning reason because I wanted to pick him first. So you don't have any platinum player. So let's say seventh team now. Who, who's going to be the platinum player for that? You have to elevate those who are not even platinum. So you are forcing the system. So first of all, before you go emotional about adding teams, you need to address financial issues. You need to address cricket issues. You need to get quality players to the platinum level so that you can provide every otherwise what will happen why PSL is successful because of the quality of the cricket so if you don't have players a for a team your quality is going to go down and which the go down is going to be counterproductive so before being emotional we need to think about ground realities Okay. All right. So, Samit, tell us um, um, about uh, Shaheen Afridi. How is he as a captain? Uh, usually, captains, you know, uh, cricket revolves around drooping and there's so much heard about it. Is he a team leader? Does he keep everybody intact? Does he foresee, you know, how a captain, uh, you know, leads from the front? You know, I used to tell this to people uh, a few years ago. Now, I think everybody is telling me how good he is. So, uh, the answers lies in the, in the result because in 2018, I remember when he was hardly 17 years old. I remember at that time I offered him a captaincy because obviously when we work together, we get to know the person and I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that he is a wonderful captain, probably going to be one of the best for Pakistan in the future. Uh, because he has some natural born skill, which is uh, not very uh, you see, I managed quite quite big names in my last seven, eight years, from AB to Williams to the Chris Scales to Brendan McCullough. So I know a few things about you know leadership because they manage the team for us. So what I see in Shaheen is something very special. He is somebody who is very, very special uh, leader. And I tell you with all the honesty and belief that he is gonna make a great leader for Pakistan, inshallah. Okay, Samin, so, how would uh, I mean you? You've seen cricket so closely; it's your business. You've seen all the players in different teams playing. Uh, given a chance that you know randomly, you're allowed to pick um, one player. Who would that be to include in your team after watching everyone in this season? I hope. I hope you don't telecast this interview during the PSL. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it's, to be very honest with you, it's like a family. And we always say that the whole calendar is not a team, it's a family. So it's very difficult for me to pick a family member over other. Uh, and I truly believe that we are a family. And uh, each one, each member of this team, whether it's playing or not playing, is as important as anybody else. So uh, honestly, they all are a superstar for us. Okay, so so uh, okay, so I'll just reframe my question then. Which team do you think when Lahore Kalandar will be, you know, plays with against? Um, you you do get jitters that you know the other team might win because they are good. I've been in this business for quite some time, so uh, <laughs> I tell you, no, with, with all honesty, T Twenty cricket you can't take anyone. Even it's not it's not a Test cricket where you have Australia and you have a Zimbabwe where you're playing it. You know, Zimbabwe don't have any chance. With due respect to Zimbabwe, but Australia will walk over. Uh, in T20 cricket, anything can happen, and any team on a given day can beat any team. So for us, obviously, the top two table uh, teams, which has in this season so far performed really well, are the immediate concern or threat: Multan and Islamabad, simply because of the fact that they are the table topper along with us. Uh, but that does not mean that other teams are lesser. The, 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 the race is as such that any team, with the exception of unfortunately Karachi, I think can qualify. With a gladiator who is at the bottom of the table is, is a very, very good team. And I tell you, we always worried about them as well, They're taking their player very seriously. They got quality players like Naseem Shah, like Iftakhar, uh, Sarfaz himself, and they have a quality, you know, international player, Kaptil. Jason Roy was there. So, uh, the long story short is that in this format, you can't say that one team is stronger and the other is not. But at the moment, obviously, those two top teams are our immediate focus. 
thank you so much for your time samin we wish you and of course all the other teams all the best and we appreciate your investment in terms of uh, you know progress for cricket and the talent in pakistan and we hope that especially regarding the female cricket the women's cricket what you are developing it does function the way the other player development program has and we have more females and good talent working and i hope that all the challenges that you some of them that you have mentioned are also addressed because uh, you know those are challenges that uh, all franchise owners must be facing thank you so much for your time that's all for 20 minutes right now goodbye